ever set up a NAS drive? I'm gonna show you how. What's up guys? Welcome back to Michael's Tech Talk. Bit of a different video today. This isn't your normal product unboxing and review video. This is a sort of setup and tips video for a NAS drive. For those of you that don't know, I, uh, I'm an infrastructure engineer and I sort of deal with this sort of thing on a bit of a bigger scale, but it's the same sort of principle. So I've been commissioned to set up this NAS drive in a backup solution for my dad uh, for his business. So uh, if you're looking at a new car, check out DS Cars. I'll uh, leave you some information in the description down below if you're uh, looking for a new car. He's your man. But let's get into it. So I don't want to bore you with any of the unboxing stuff. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the QNAP and then this is its power pack and screws and this and the other. So this is the 4Bay QNAP. This is the TS451 Plus. So this is a great wee uh, NAS. This has the Celeron quad core to 2.0 GHz processor, which uh, to run the QNAP OS is a decent processor, you know, so if you're going to use this for storage, for backups, or if you're going to use it as a media server, for example, for the likes of Plex, it's really, really good. You can upgrade the RAM up to 8 gig. This model comes with 2 gig installed as standard, so which is okay for what we're going to be using it for. And then what we have here is the Western Digital two terabyte red discs now the wd reds are nas drives basically they're a, way, a little bit more robust they're, they perform a little bit better than just standard drives so that is what we're going to be using so we have four of these and we're going to be using the we're going to set these up in raid five so we're basically going to strike them together in, our, in a raid and then we'll have a hot spare so this is what we're working with so first off what you need to do is we'll need to Put these discs into the cradles. So obviously these are just plastic hard drive cradles and that's what's inside so it's very very straightforward. Uh, in the box there we have our power supply, there's a little media remote and we have a network cable and screws which is what we need. And now our network cable as well. That's handy. So that's the hard disks now into their caddies, which will go into each of these bays. And they are numbered one to four. So it'll be from left to right. So you've got one, two, three, four. Now, what I would recommend that you do as a good practice, obviously this is brand new, these discs aren't used or set up. So what I would do as good practice is mark these discs with a number. And the reason why is simply if you ever have to um, go and shut down the NAS drive, if you're needing to clean it out or if you're needing to swap out a disc or things like that there, if you ever have it shut down and have the discs out of the enclosure, it's good to know what order they go back in. So I would just take the legs of a Sharpie and just mark a number on each of the discs so that you know which disc is which. And these only go in one way, so you can just gently slide them in so what you do is you slide them in push here and then click so lift the handle just slide in push click push click push and click and there we go so that is our NAS drive ready to get connected up and set up let's do it just before we get started just a quick look at the back of the NAS drive so these are the ports we have so this is our power supply port here this is a USB 3 fast USB port. We've got two normal USB ports and we've got two NICs. This model also comes with an HDMI port as well. So that means we can connect up a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor to it for setup, which is useful. Some of these models don't come with a graphical output, which means you have to sort of just plug it into the network, find the IP address and then set it up that way. So this way will be a bit easier. We can connect it up to a screen, which I'll do now. So. I'll get that set up and here we are just powered on going through the motions yay so this is us up and running now as you can see we are the blue cable is connected to my network which is just up in there and that has given it an IP address which you'll see just up there 
So that basically means now that that's on the network, the NAS can be accessed through the network. You can open up a, a web browser and browse to that IP address and you'll be able to get logged in. Or you can go through the setup here. If you go through the steps there, you'll sort of see it'll give you a generic name, it'll give you an admin account, you know, pretty, pretty generic stuff. And uh, you know, the likes of your IP address. You know, the network settings are set to automatic, so it's pretty straightforward stuff. Yeah, there's your time zone. Yeah, please confirm you'd like to proceed with the disk configuration. Yeah, that sort of just shows you how straightforward it is. Do not power off the NAS or disconnect the disks just as you're going through the motions, which is pretty self explanatory, I think. Uh, just as we're going through the motions here as well, I forgot to mention that the operating system on this NAS drive is QTS, which is QNAP's own operating system and web GUI for accessing the system. It's basically just built on a Linux backend and it has a good look to it once it's up and running. There you go, that's the basics all set up. That's the OS set up and configured as the disks have been initialized. So now we can get logged into it via the web browser and we can, we can get all the things set up on it now which is great. So that's our NAS set up and running. So now what we're going to do is we're going to log into the uh, user interface and configure the disks, set them up, set up the RAID. Yeah, crack on from there. So there we go. As you can see, it's a pretty nice user interface, which uh, I kind of like. Uh, it is kind of Mac os -y, but again, it's on a Linux back end, it's to be expected. So first off, what we want to do is we're going to storage and snapshots. So welcome to storage. We'll click new storage pool. We'll hit next. So as you can see, there's our disks. So we have four two terabyte disks, which is great. And it has picked them all up and they are all good and healthy, which is great. Wouldn't be the first time that I've had disks come and they're DOA. So that's good to see. So what we do is we select all of our disks. So you have options here for your RAID. So you can do a mixture of different types of RAID. And obviously depending on how many disks you have and what exactly you're wanting to achieve will determine on what's the best type of RAID for you. So you've got your RAID 0, which is a stripe. So basically what that will do is that will stripe all of your volumes together to make one big massive volume. Basically what you'll have there is you'll have four two terabyte disks striped together into one volume to make eight terabyte. Now that's all well and good, but what the only problem you have there is that you don't get any redundancy. So if you have a disk that fails, it'll break the array and then you'll lose a lot of data. That's not good. The next version then is RAID 1. RAID 1 is your mirrored RAID. So for example, if you have two disks, you can stripe two disks together. So if you have two two terabyte disks, you can mirror them and it'll show us a volume of two terabytes. But what that basically means is if you have a disk that fails, it'll fall over to the other disk. So you'll have redundancy there. What that means then is you'll be able to remove the faulty disk, put another disk in, and then the array will rebuild and then you're back up and running. So RAID 1 is good for that that sort of thing. It's not the way to go when you've got more than two disks. So that's not what we're gonna be using here today. Then your next one is your RAID 5. So RAID 5 then allows you to create a stripe, but then allows you to configure a hot spare, which is kind of what we want to do. We want to have a balance of setting up a good amount of storage, but then having a bit of redundancy then as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to stripe together this, these disks into a RAID 5. We'll have three disks striped together and then we'll have a hot spare. So in the event of a disk failing, we could swap a disk around and things like that there. So that's what we're going to do. Right. So. So what we'll do is we'll select the three disks that we're going to use. So these first three disks we're going to stripe together and then our hot spare is going to be disk number four. So disk one, two and three is going to be our volume and then disk four is our hot spare. So there we go. So with our with our config there that is going to get us uh, up and running then with just below four terabyte of space which is pretty good. So we get a good amount of storage and then we get a good we get a hot spare then as well. So if we get a disk failure where we have that redundancy then, which is great. And that's all there is to creating a volume on your NAS drive. A couple of tips for your best practices for setting up a NAS drive. First off, the first thing I would do is create yourself an admin account that is unique to yourself with a complex password and disable the built-in admin account. This is because default admin and administrator accounts are the target for brute force attacks. So to avoid a brute force attack, create yourself a unique account and a complex password.
Second tip I would say is once you have your NAS set up and configured, give your NAS a static IP address. Simply put, uh, if your NAS is set as DHCP, uh, every time you reboot your NAS, it's going to get a different IP address. So it's good practice to set it as a static if you want to know where it is on your network and isolate that from the rest of your network, you know, if you can. Storage pool is now up and running, so now we just need to create volume. So if we go, just follow through the wizard, uh, data volume, we'll set that to max. And we'll get the maximum amount of storage, which is great. And if we hit next, next and finish. And there we go. We now have our volume set up. So we now have a massive amount of space set up. And now we can start setting up folders and directories and things like that there which is great. And that's the basics of getting a NAS drive set up. I've sort of went through the basics here. If, if you want to see more videos like this, guys, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you want to see. Um, if you have any questions about any of this as well, by all means, pop me a, pop me a question down below and I'll more than happy to answer any questions. That just about wraps it up for this video, guys. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button. I massively appreciate it, guys. And if you haven't already, you know what you need to do. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're on the road to 1,000 subs, and uh, the sooner we get there, the sooner we can do another tech giveaway. So by all means, uh, like, comment, share, get it out there, and uh, yeah, we can give away some free stuff. If you want to be notified of cool videos just like this, by all means, hit that little bell to be notified. I'm going to go and do a bit more config on this NAS drive, and uh, until the next one, guys, I'll catch you later.